Broadcasting live from Shibuya, Tokyo, this is your host, Aaron Randall. Welcome to American Hot Topics. Today we're going to talk about various and new items that are hot and trending in America. Things that are most commonly unknown to Japanese. Today's program is brought to you by Kotobanku. この番組は某国立大学で英語を教えているアーロンと英語学習中のジュンがお送りいたします This week we're going to talk about David Bowie Hello everyone, thank you for joining us on another episode of American Hot Topics This is your host Aaron, I'm here with ジュン and we are in Shibuya So the biggest news this week in not just the American media but the international media was the death of David Bowie Not just musicians, but many artists were inspired by David Bowie's work and imagination. David Bowie died of cancer on January 10th, 2016, in Manhattan, New York City, New York, United States. So, June, have you heard of David Bowie? 恥ずかしながらあんまり知らないんですよね。生態的にっていうか。デビッド・ボーイさんってアメリカ人ですかイギリス人ですか Well, he was born and raised in South London, but he garnered huge international success in music, art, and fashion. And much like the Beatles made his way over to America, you know, Americans probably think of him as one of their own. でもアーロンさんは僕と同じぐらいなんで、やっぱり世代的にはずれてる感あるんじゃないですか Right, right. You know, I first learned of David Bowie through film. Um, his music is used in a lot of independent and even big budget cinema. The name of the movie was The Life Aquatic. Wes Anderson? Life Aquatic? Right, right. Have you seen it? No. No, but I've seen it. I've seen it. あのみんな大好きグランドブタペストホテルでおなじみのウェス・アンダーソンとビル・マーレの。Right, right, right. They are an awesome collaboration too, right? So, West Anderson, right? Director of such movies as The Grand Budapest Hotel that we talked about previously on the show. In West Anderson's 2004, The Life Aquatic, he implanted an iconic role of Pel dos Santos, a crew member on the ship. Who would sit on the deck with his classical guitar and sing and play David Bowie songs in <laughs> Portuguese, <laughs> right?、Um, specifically, the song Space Oddity. So I remember the first time I saw this film and how special this character was to me. It was such a subtle nuance in the film, too, but so unique. The actor musician was Sue George, a musician from Brazil. Wikipedia writes. In 2005, Brazilian singer Sue George did a cover album of 14 Bowie songs, many of them from Ziggy Stardust, as a soundtrack for the film The Life Aquatic. The translation into Portuguese is not always exact, as Sue George maintains the melodies and styles, but often varies the lyrics. Bowie himself said of Sue George's covers Had Sue George not recorded my songs in Portuguese, I would never have heard this new level of beauty which he has imbued them with. ああじゃあデビッド・ボーイさん自身もこのカバーに対して評価してるわけね。Yes, yes, yes. このポルトガルアレンジ、YouTube でも結構聞けますね。Yeah, yeah, you can check out a lot of the videos on YouTube, right? ボサノバ調なのこれ。Some of the songs are、um, Bossa Nova style. はいはい、はい、Some of them are just regular, you know, like rock style. へえ、mm-hmm. And you know, actually,、um, uh, Sue George having this role in the movie actually propelled him to stardom.、Um, I went to see him at this big music festival in、uh, Tennessee the year that the movie came out. へえ。Mm-hmm. まあ、でもあのおしゃれ番長のウェス・アンダーソン的にも映画にちょいちょい曲を入れ込んでくるぐらいデビッド・ボーイ好きなんですね。Right, right, right. So, Wes Anderson is said to have listened to David Bowie's Space Oddity during the creation and filming of Life Aquatic. Similar to David Bowie's character, Bill Murray's character, Steve Zissou, faced isolation and loneliness. In order to portray this feeling of isolation in Bill Murray's character, Wes Anderson used Space Oddity and other David Bowie songs in his film. Wes Anderson's first book was a stop motion anime of the Nihon no Inu no Hanashi. Oh, really? Cool, cool. Inu no Koyo b i l l m a r Awesome, awesome. Yeah,、um, actually,、um, we looked it up online, and、uh, Bill Murray、uh, had a quote about this new movie he's making with Wes. And he says, I'm playing a dog. He's doing another, like, a stop motion animated kind of comedy, sort of like Fantastic Mr. Fox. He goes on to say, and it's a Japanese story, and I'm playing a dog. I'm very excited. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it seems like a very, very、um, sarcastic comment, right? Yeah. <laughs>
じゃあ一番最初にアーロンが言ってたようにデビッド・ボーイさんが影響を与えたのはミュージシャンだけじゃなくて、まあ、映画監督とか他のジャンルにもまたがるってことなんですね。Right, right, right. So let's talk about、um, David Bowie as a visual artist. So personally, I don't not like David Bowie, but I don't listen to his music. はいはいはい。あ、そうなんだ。Right. The reason being, he appeals more to the visual artists, the artists with the message, the John Lennon fans, right?、Um, people often ask, Who is your favorite Beatle? Amongst musicians, this question can easily define a musician.、Uh, Paul McCartney equals the musical type composition, sound, mixing, audio engineering. These are the reasons people who love Paul McCartney love him. John Lennon is more about the message, love and peace, the movement, the image, the meaning behind the lyrics. John Lennon appeals more to the David Bowie fan. Hi, 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 hi. Not a whole man. Yeah, so they're about the message, the way it looks. So, I personally identify more with Paul McCartney. He's my favorite Beatle. June, who is your favorite Beatle? I'm not sure if you're a little bit of a Beatle. I'm not sure if you're a little bit of a Beatle. I'm not sure if you're a little bit of a Beatle. I'm not sure if you're a little bit of a Beatle. I'm not sure if you're a little bit of a Beatle. I'm not sure if you're a little bit of a Beatle. I'm not sure if you're a little bit of a Beatle. I'm not sure if you're a little bit of a Beatle. I'm not sure if you're a little bit of a Beatle. I'm not sure if you're a little bit of a Beatle. I'm not sure if you're a little bit of a Beatle. No, but honestly, I really like that guy as an actor.、Um, when I first started studying Japanese, I watched Mr. Brain. Ah, so this guy. I really liked it, yeah. Hi, hi, hi. Nihon, the you may not get on to see Zenbu Kimutak Monday, the other one is going to be. Ah, kind of like Tom Cruise. Ah, ma, so that's it. So, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. Kimutak Monday, so that's it. 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 Mm-hmm. So, as I was saying, you know,、um, David Bowie was more about the image, more about the message. And being that as it may, Bowie was really big in the fashion world. According to Fashionista magazine, Bowie was the poster boy of the glam rock era with his Ziggy Stardust alter ego and was a pioneer of androgynous fashions, which have recently surged in popularity. Androgynous fashion is what? Androgynous is the combination of masculine and feminine characteristics.、ね、exactly right. According to MTV.com, David Bowie has been cited as an influence by almost everyone worth mentioning. He also happens to be a continual well of inspiration for those in the fashion industry. He was a resource for Lady Gaga's costumes while on tour in Japan. He starred in a fashion film for Louis Vuitton, in which he sort of reprises his role as Goblin King. While seducing Arizona Muse, Kate Moss was even transformed into Bowie for Vogue twice, once in 2003 and again in 2012. はいはいはい、今、アーロンが紹介してくれた MTV の記事を見てるんですけど、うん、右側にデビッド・ボーイのオリジナルの服の写真があって左にそれに影響を受けた比較的最近作られた服を、うん、ケイト・モスだったりいろんなモデルさんが着てる対比の画像を見てるんですけど、まあ、確かにすごいですね、なんか<笑>いやこれなんか語彙が貧困で何とも言えないですけどそのどれも奇抜、うん、でも絶対に自分じゃ着たくないっていうかもう人類のほとんどに似合わないだろうっていうデザインで。<笑>すごいいろんなバリエーションがあってこれなんて言ったらいいんですかね「TM レボリューション調」だって、うん、そのデビッド・ボーイからの防具からのジョジョの奇妙な冒険みたいな、うん、そのジョジョの源泉みたいなそういうファッションですかね、right, right. あと日本のビジュアル系バンドの元ネタの元ネタの元ネタの元ネタみたいな,<笑>なんか全部の始まり始祖調みたいな<笑> yes, 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 yes. これ彼が自分で作ってるんですか Yeah, you know, a lot of the costumes he、uh, made by himself and he collaborated with a lot of other fashion designers. Ah, hi, hi. まあ、だから彼が死んでそのポール・スミスだったりそのジャン・ポール・ゴルチエ、うんまあ、いろんなそのデザイナーがツイートコメントっていうのもなんかわかりますね。Right, right, right. This is really one of what I personally believe to be his biggest contributions to a world society. はいはいはい。なんか偉大な人に思えてきましたね。知らなかったですけど、全然今まで。<笑>はい、yeah, it's, it's quite amazing. And you know, his androgynous fashion style originates from the idea that he's thought to be bisexual. Hi, hi. Ah, I'm a soul, none of this. Right. You know,、um, in a September 1976 interview with Playboy, Bowie said, It's true, I am a bisexual, but I can't deny that I've used that fact very well. I suppose it's the best thing that ever happened to me. And according to another source, Bowie had a relationship with Mick Jagger. Maji, they're big couples. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Bowie actually later denied these claims, but he did make these claims back in the 70s.
ファッションとかアート系への影響が大きかったのは分かったんですけど音楽自体はどう評価されてるんですかアーロンあんまり好きじゃないんだっけ ?No, it's not that I don't like him. I just don't relate to him as much as you know a lot of other people do. So yeah, let's get into David Bowie's music career. Um, he sold over 140 million albums since his first release in 1967. He's had 111 singles, averaging more than two a year during his career. He's had 51 music videos, along with a number of film roles, including The Man Who Fell to Earth and Labyrinth. He's had 25 studio albums, including Black Star, which was released two days before his death, so just last week. すごい長期にわたって音楽活動自体でもすごく活躍された方ってことですよね。Yes. 111枚シングルってすごいですね。Yeah, he's, he's been a very busy musical recording artist, right?、Oh. So, getting into his musical style, by some he's considered genreless. But we can probably say art rock, glam rock, pop, electronic, experimental, alternative rock. So, an artist really comprised of many styles of music, but probably above all else, rock and roll. ね、right. According to Rolling Stone, David Bowie is a consummate musical chameleon. Chameleon. Chameleon? Right, right, right. はいはいはい、はい、And then consummate means to be very skilled, right? High skill in a ongak chameleon. Yes, exactly, right? <laughs> so, David Bowie has been a folk singer, androgynous, alien, decadent, blue eyed soul man, art rocker. And a modern pop star, with each persona spawning a new league of imitators. His late 70s collaborations with Brian Eno made Bowie one of the few older stars to be taken seriously by the new wave. In the 80s, Bowie followed the mainstream pop smash Let's Dance, number one in 1983, with numerous attempts to keep up with current trends. In the 90s, that meant embracing grunge, industrial rock, rap, and dance music to varying degrees of success. はいはいはい、70年代はブライアン・イーノと仕事してたんだ。Right, right. ブライアン・イーノさんって Windows95 の起動音作った人でしょ。Well, that's one of the things he's done. But you know, he's a very famous producer. He's worked with Coldplay and a lot of other you know, chart topping artists. はいはい、the Rolling Stone article then says, But by then, Bowie's place in history was secure. This is a man who did for pretensions what Jimi Hendrix did for electric guitar. Jimi Hendrix was a guitar legend, and he was a guitar legend. 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 He was a very eloquent way to put it. So, almost all of David Bowie's albums were, in fact, concept albums. June, do you know what a concept album is? Concept album is not a concept album. Concept album is not a c o n c e p Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good way to define it, right? So, um, A concept album is a studio album where all musical or lyrical ideas contribute to a single overall theme or unified story. Hi, hi, hi. In contrast, typical studio albums consist of a number of unconnected songs, lyrically and otherwise, performed by the artist. So, the best example of a concept album is the Beatles, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. So, let's talk about Ziggy Stardust, probably one of his most famous concept albums. The rise and fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars, often shortened to Ziggy Stardust, is the fifth studio album by David Bowie. It is a concept album telling the story of a fictional rock star named Ziggy Stardust. Ziggy is the human manifestation of an alien being who is attempting to present humanity with a message of hope in the last five years of its existence. Ziggy represents the definitive rock star, sexually promiscuous, wild and drug intake, but with a message. Ultimately, of peace and love. He is destroyed by both his own consumptions and by the fans he inspired. Upon its release on June 16, 1972, Ziggy Stardust reached number five in the UK and number 75 in the US. It was eventually certified platinum and gold in the UK and US, respectively. The album would go on to sell an estimated 7.5 million copies worldwide, making it Bowie's second best selling album. My personal favorite from this album is Moon Age Daydream, which I embarrassingly heard for the first time in the movie Guardians of the Galaxy. It's a slow paced rock song with beautiful melody and shrilling Bowie vocals. The guitar is grungy and mixed just right. I highly recommend this song. 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 I'm an alligator! So, 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 so. I don't know. Yeah, that's hard to sing, man. The next album I must introduce is the self titled David Bowie, 
which features one of David's most famous songs, Space Oddity. Originally released as a single in July 1969, Space Oddity is about the launch of Major Tom, a fictional astronaut, and was released during a period of great interest in spaceflight. The United States Apollo 11 mission would launch five days later, and would become the first man moon landing another five days later. So David Bowie released this song right at the time when everyone was extremely interested in space travel and space flight, and right before the Apollo 11 mission landed on the moon. So David Bowie essentially captured the imagination that everyone had about space flight and space travel at the time. You know, this is a guy that has just been able to over and over again really read the current generation and what they're thinking about and put it into song form. そしてこれがウェス・アンダーソンが、まあ、一番最初に言ってた「ライフ・アクアティック」を作るときにずっと聴いてたっていう曲ですね。Right, right. そう考えると当時も時代の最先端でありかつ現代から見ても孤独感とか冒険とかっていう普遍的なテーマを扱った現代でも聴けるっていう曲を残したやっぱり非常に音楽的にも偉大なアーティストなんですね。Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And recently,、um, an astronaut by the name of Chris Hadfield, who is a Canadian astronaut and was the first Canadian to walk in space, made A cover of Space Oddity and filmed it in space. So on May 12th, 2013, after handing over command of the ISS or International Space Station, but before returning home, Hadfield released a music video recorded on the ISS of a modified rendition of Space Oddity. So, June, you should type in Chris Hadfield on YouTube. It's a really, really cool video. You gotta check it out. おおこれは実際の国際宇宙ステーションですね、mm-hmm. ここでおじさんがギターを持って歌ってますね、right, right. しかもアレンジがアコースティックでなんかすごいいい感じですね Yeah, yeah Actually, at first, you know it looked a little cheesy or sounded a little cheesy but I actually really like it It's really well done このクリス・ハドフィールドさん国際宇宙ステーションで過ごしながらツイートしてた人か Right, right He gained a lot of popularity because up in the station he was on Twitter and other social media, right?、Um, kind of documenting his time up there あこのおじさんテッドにも出てますね、mm-hmm. 宇宙飛行士の間ではこんな言い回しがあります。どんなひどい問題でもそれ以上悪化しないとは言い切れない。<笑>では、危険で恐ろしい状況の複雑さやプレッシャーをどう切り抜ければよいのでしょうか、えー、退役したクリス・ハドフィールド大佐が宇宙での、そして人生での最悪の状況への備え方を分かりやすく説明します。すごいですね。これ、テッドも合わせてみたいですね。うん、いや、ワンチェックアウト。続きましてミニコーナー今日の英単語。アルさんこれが本日のリストになります。All right, so here is this week's word list. Subtle, clever and indirect, imbued, inspire or permeate with, androgynous, partly male and partly female in appearance, muse, a woman or a force personified as a woman who is the source of inspiration. For a creative artist. Diffusion, the spreading of something more widely. Dispute, a disagreement or argument. Reprise, a repeated passage in music. Seducing, to attract powerfully. Consummate, showing great skill and flair. Spawning, to release or deposit something. Pretensions, The use of affection to impress. So, June, I gotta tell you,、um, I wasn't the biggest David Bowie fan, but after working on this podcast with you and doing all this research and listening to David Bowie all day, I think,、uh, I, think I love David Bowie. But I know, I know. I'm going to say, 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 I'm going to Thank you for joining us this week on American Hot Topics. The music in this program is brought to you by Mateen Jahanmari and Aaron Randall. 